so coming up, are you originally from Kansas City or like born and raised? Oh, I'm born and Missouri, raised, man. born, and, born raised. and raised in Kansas City. Yes, sir. Kansas City, Missouri, or Kansas, Kansas City, Kansas. Oh, okay, Fifth okay. Street. Gateway is where I grew up, man. Gateway, gateway, gateway. Yes, sir. Man, I got family down there myself. Yeah. Gateway was kind of rough back in the day, man. It, it was, was rough. It was rough. It was rough. It was rough. Gateway, <laughs> shit, man. It probably still rough. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah. But yeah, Gateway, man. Have you ever experienced any trials and tribulations just coming out of Gateway? Or was it just cool, family oriented? Did the family have your back? Oh, we was all... Everybody in Gateway, for real, for real. When I was living down there, we was all a family. You know what I'm saying? It was... It was it, we was all a family. But our parents uh, got us up out of there. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't down there for too long. I think I was like, what? 10, 11 when we got from there. You know what I'm saying? So, wasn't too bad. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, kind of like what happened with me. You know, I was like, yeah. um, lived uh Kansas City, Missouri on uh, 27th Street and parents got us out that environment, which is cool. You know, it's not bad. We manifested to the people we are today. It, it's not necessarily the environment that makes you. It's... The person, the people around you, yeah. you know, the people that th that influence you. That's why it's good to be a YouTube influencer right. because there's a lot of people watching our content. There's a lot of people that look for us for advice, you know. Exactly. How important is you for you to talk about different things, different events, different things on your platform? It's important. You just, um, I just feel like you never know. What anybody's going through, you know what I'm saying? You never know what situation somebody's in and something that you may say could help that person whatever they're going through, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's real important. Right. I'm going to flip this one back up. I'm tripping. Yeah. I'm going to it down all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Man. Kansas City. Yes, sir. Came a long way. We got, we got Patrick Mahomes blowing up the city right now. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mess with dude. Oh, whoa, whoa. I don't whoa. mess with dude. I'm yeah. a stealer die hard. Oh, wow, well, yeah, yeah. I am a stealer oh, die hard, bro. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. Patrick Mahomes is that dude. He's that dude, you know what I'm saying? He's going to be a future GOAT, you know what I'm saying? He handled his business. But I don't mess with dude like that. I'm going to give him I'm gonna give him his props, but nah, I'm a stealer die hard, bro. What do you got against Pat? I ain't got nothing against him. I told you. He he nice. He like that. You know what I'm saying? He like that. Dude, I don't, I don't even know, bro. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a stealer, bro. I'm a, I am I get props when dude, but at the end of the day, uh, don't get me wrong. I like the Chiefs, too. You know what I'm saying? That's my that's my home team. You feel me? That's my home team. I like the Chiefs, too. But whenever the Chiefs go against the Steelers, I will be going against the Steelers. Sorry, but that's that's what it is, bro. Man, that's what it is. I can dig it, man. What got you into being a Steelers fan, like a diehard Steelers fan? My uncles, man. When I was little, I was around my uncles, and they was they were Steelers fans. I started watching them, and bro, I just I just fell in love. Troy Palomalu, man, Ben Roethlisberger, shoot, Antonio Brown. Just growing up, man, all of them is just legends to me. <laughs> Legends, Heinz Ward, the bus, huh. boys is crazy. The whole nine, the whole nine, bro. Man, that's, that's what a real championship team look like. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all you Chiefs fans, I ain't throwing no shade at nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> all you Chiefs fans watching this video, listen and learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It didn't take us fifty years. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, yeah, ah, that was good. Hold the comments. Hold the comments, bro. <laughs> that was good. I like it. Yeah, man. Kansas City in general, man. Yeah. And the entertainment scene mm -hmm. is getting on fire. You see yeah. a lot of people in front of the camera. A lot of people just doing different things now. A lot yeah. of prom pro promoters. A lot of parties. There's a lot of stuff to get into. Yeah, people know it's hard to make it out of Kansas City. Right. So people are working more harder to try to keep
cancel that narrative about us. You know what I'm saying? So they out there trying to they trying to get it. Right, right. And with people coming up in the game that made it out, Tech Nine, Sleazy World Go. There's a lot of people that made it out. Yeah. Kansas City still come back, uh, show love in general. And with Kansas City kind of being in the spotlight, yeah. like I mentioned, uh, Patrick Mahomes, a lot of people. Does it give you an advantage for your YouTube channel to keep expanding? Because there's a lot of eyes on the city right now as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, to a, a certain extent, you know what I'm saying? I'm keeping it going for me, myself. You know what I'm saying? If I just so happen to come out, you know, of my city, then yeah, I mean, that, that's great. Like I said, it's, it's, it's rare that you hear somebody coming out of Kansas City doing something Doing something big, you know what I'm saying? It's always Atlanta, Chicago, anything like that, you know what I'm saying? You never hear too much about Kansas City. Right, right. We in the middle of the map, and it's like, okay, what's really going on down here? I never heard about this place right. years ago, right? but okay, now I'm hearing about it. Now, wait a minute. And not so much negative. You know right, I mean? yeah, not so much negative. Right. Now. Ideally, Kansas City. What do you think the dating scene is, is like in Kansas City? Like, really? Like, I didn't heard mixed decisions, and I see that laugh hey. in your face. What is the dating scene like in Kansas City? That shit trash, bro. That shit is trash. Well, I'm not I'm not speaking for myself. I've been in a relationship for four going on five years. You know what I'm saying? But before then, and what I, you know, what I see my, my, my homies go through and something like that, bro, Kansas City is not the place to find your lover. I am just saying, bro. It's too many hoes. You know what I'm saying? All these girls want to be hot girl summer with a fake ass wops and shit like that. Nah, bro. Nah, Kansas City is not the place for it. You're going to have to get out and, and do your own shit because uh, hell no. Nah. Uh-uh. I wouldn't recommend it. I would I would not recommend uh, Don't get me wrong. There's some females out here in Kansas City that's, that's really about they stuff. You feel me? But mostly, nah, they hoes. They, they they only want one thing, man. They trying to get, they trying to, yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> I'm just there, saying. There's a big, it's almost like a, when I look on Facebook, it's almost like a war between men and women. Uh-huh. And they're all going back at each other. And it seems like they just all want to be treated with respect. Yeah. Dignity, uh, you know, some sort of empathy and whatnot. What Which, females don't understand, in order to get respect, you have to give respect. You have to give respect. You can't, you can't, you can't want a man to to do everything and you just sit there. Like I'm telling you, a man to cook, a man to clean, a man would change the oil in the car, a man would do all this, and a woman won't even do no type of duties in, around the house or nothing like that. Like. Come on, man. It's 50-50. It's not... It's, no, it's 50-50. You gotta, you gotta be with it. You gotta be with it. Right. Well, a lot of shit on TV, man, you just see, like, the basketball wise and all. They portray yeah. women just to be these loud, uh, you know, just like... Oh, they uh, are. Rah, rah, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are. I'm telling you. But that's why, really, a lot of relationships do not work out. They see what's going on on TV. They see what's going on on social media, Twitter, and all that stuff. And they and they think that life, real life, that is stuff that you see on TV and stuff like that is all scripted. It's scripted in. It's not real. So it, it, it's never going to be like that. It's never going to be like that. So you can't base your relationship off of what you see on social media. Like, oh, I want a love and basketball type of relationship. Like... You don't even know how to hoop. So how do you want a love and basketball relationship? Or like that that shows the team that that just came out on BET and stuff like that. How um how uh Fatima and and Zach is so like no, that is not real life. A girl is not about to stay with a dude that cheats that cheated and had sex with multiple women and she finding out throughout the whole relationship Ain't no female about to stick, especially in Kansas City. Ain't no female about to, no, ain't no female about to do that. You can't, you can't always believe what you, what you see on TV. Right. It's all entertainment. It's all entertainment. It's scripted. scripted. It's scripted. 
and everything is scripted for them to act a certain way as exactly. well. It's, they're exactly. actors. Exactly. That's their job. That's what they get paid to do. Unless I get paid to um, script whatever you want me to do for you, you ain't paying me. You know what I'm saying? Right. So They're going to have to have a bat. Yeah, you're going to do something. Sure. Well, everything is an illusion. Yeah. Everything is an illusion, especially TV. That's why it's very important not to believe it. Yeah. And not to get brainwashed on what you see on TV, especially exactly. these reality dating shows as uh-huh. well, which I believe does have a big influence on society today. Bigger than what most people know. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So Kansas City dating scene is... Pretty much out the window for... Well, it been out the window for me. Like I said, I've been with the same girl for four going on five five years. You feel me? Yes. Like, I, I was never the type to to hold around. You feel me? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't with that. I wanted to get a girl. I wanted to see this girl every day. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to take this one girl out, spoil this one girl. You know what I'm saying? That, that's just me. Like, right. I, right. I was never into having hoes or nothing like that. Like, that... It's a little too much. Like, again, I was... I was Raised in the house with all females, you know what I'm saying? So growing up, I was taught to love one female, you know, do for one female, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of course, when I'm single, when I was single, of course, you know, I was around doing what I do. But once I got into that relationship, it's like, that was it. Man. How important is to catering and just uh, manifesting your queen into greatness? Oh, it's very important, but it's also important to do the same thing back to your king. You feel me? If I spoil you, you bet you better be spoiling me, spoiling me back. That that's what it is. Again, it's fifty fifty. I'm not about to spoil you, and then you do nothing for like. What do I need you for if you're not giving nothing back? Right, right. Like, come on now. Right. It's just the lack of empathy. Yeah. It's a lack of empathy and feeling that th- some women have. Definitely. And then I have people feeling like, oh, I love I love this person more because I'm doing more for him. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. It's, yeah. it's just that lack of empathy and feeling that just really throws everything off. And like you said, everything should be 50-50 to a certain extent. Yeah. You know, as men, uh, we work hard. We're providers. Yeah. And sometimes it's the little things that help. Uh, uh, pat on back, dinner cooked, or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, clean exactly. house. It's you know, it's a little that, thing. It's the little things that make me happy, man. Let me get off work, come home. And you in the kitchen cooking me something. Bro, I will go out and buy you whatever the heck you want right now. It's it's little stuff for me. It's little stuff for me, man. Like let me come home to a clean house. Let me come home and not have to have to wash dishes or, or put dishes up or cook or clean or do any of that. Boy, you know how much love I will show you if I ain't have to do too much? Right. It's the little things with man, you know, like it's crazy. Just, it, it's the little things, but they make, but then, it in the they make it seem like we asking for so much when we literally asking for nothing. The bare minimum. We're asking the bare minimum. But, oh, we asking for way too much. Way too much. Come right, on, man. right. <laughs> Be realistic, please. <laughs> please. Well, let's just say the appreciation value is kind of... And that's why I can see a lot of men like uh, going through like mental illness because... Yeah. It's hard for men to talk to anybody about this because we're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be powerful. Right. But when we go through these uh, signs of neglect and abandonment, right. it does, it can get to a man, yeah, you know? Definitely. And then when we do cry out, we're looked at we look soft, soft as being we weak. soft. Yeah. Come on now. Can you explain that aspect? But then, but then a girl wants you, like, okay, say something bothering you about something. And the girl uh, always wants you to, you know what I'm saying? She be like, uh, well, I will never know if you never address it or you never come to me about it. But when I do come to you about a situation, you telling me to toughen up. I don't want to hear that if something is bothering me. I don't want to hear toughen up. I want to hear something that's going to encourage me and build me back up. You feel me? Yes, yes. But come on now. You can't you can't sit up here and be like, oh, you need to toughen up. You a dude. You need to, you know, you need to do this and that. Nah, right. bro. Sometimes I be feeling low, you know what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. We're I don't know human. how to take it. Right. I don't know how to take it. Right. We're, we're human beings in general, you yeah, know? Yeah, at the end of the day, we all cry. We all bleed the same blood. Right. We, we as uh, men, providers, good men, 
we need a sense of security and comfort yeah. because we're not always going to be this powerful all the time. Exactly. So when we fall off, hey, we need that empathy. We yeah. need that feeling. We need a hug. We need some. We need you to build us back up. Give us that strength that we lack. It. Right. Right. Yeah. Very good analogy. Yeah, yeah. On a Kansas City <laughs> dating scene, man. Wow, very good, very good. You know, hey, yeah. I, I can I talk like about it. the dating scene all day. I, I like it. I, I love it. I love it, man. So we're gonna start with the videos, man. The food, man. Like oh, the, yeah, the, bro. the food, cook, man. I love to cook, bro, man. That's a plus. That got to be a plus in a ladies' department oh, yeah. as well. No, oh, yeah. A man that knows how to cook. That's one less thing that my girl got to worry about because I really don't trip about my girl cooking for me. It'd be like one day out the week that I would ask her, hey, can you cook something for me? But other than that, bro, I'm in the kitchen, bro. I'm on the grill. I'm I'm doing it, bro. I'm doing it. Like, I love to cook. I love to cook. I feel like nobody's food is better than mine, bro. Like, I hate eating out. I'm so tired of eating. Everything is so expensive right now and going up. I hate... Bro, you can't even buy healthy groceries because the fat groceries is more is more cheaper than the healthy groceries. They're trying to kill us. It's, it's crazy. It's right. crazy. Right. But yeah, man, I'd rather cook myself than go out to eat any day. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff we cook take better than a restaurant quality Definitely. stuff. Definitely. Way better. Yeah. And it fills you up more. Yeah. And yeah I'm about to say you got a lot more to yourself than what you would have in a restaurant. Right. Qualities of it. Yep. Bundles. More cheaper, I'm telling you. More cheaper. Shoot, I make a slab of rib for, shoot, $10, make a slab on the grill, bro. Feel me right up. Boy, I'm telling you, when you go to uh, Famous Days or some spot like that, they give you a half rack for $13. Yeah, I'm tweaking, bro. Yeah, I'm tweaking. <laughs> hey, you ever thought about creating your own cooking channel, Dez? I thought about it. I got people always hit me up talking about uh, when you're going to start making plates and stuff like that. I'm like... Hey, don't give me no ideas, cause I'm telling you, bro, I really be on it. Like I, I, li- I be posting some of my food all the time. I be making pastas and um, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, green beans, man. I be making fish, ribs, chicken. I be, I be making it all, bro. Man, that's what I'm talking about. You know, just learning how to cook in general. You are gonna save some money. Oh yeah, and like I said, keep the girl happy. Keep the girl happy. All they wanna do is eat. All they want to do is. Well, I be spending like three hundred fifty dollars every two months on some groceries. Oh, and I barely eat it. Right, right, right. (laughs) Come on, (laughs) come on, man. Come on. Yeah, sure. Yeah, man. It's just very important, man. It's a lot healthier. You know what's going in. Yeah. And you are the chef in general. You know, you are the chef. You're whipping it up. Uh, You get it anytime. So, can you explain? Being on a healthier kick in your life, you was going to the gym. Yeah. Man, what was that experience like with you going to the gym, working with Fred? Yeah. Everybody, man, what was that experience like for you, like, mentally? Because you were really getting it, man. I ain't going to lie. I felt so much better with myself. You know what I'm saying? I felt at ease with myself. I felt like a heavy load was just, just weakening. You know what I'm saying? I started dropping weight. The reason why I was doing it was actually because... I was going on a cruise, you know what I'm saying? And I was trying to get my body right, you know what I'm saying? You know, before you go on a vacation, try and get your body right and stuff like that. So that's what I was doing. I was uh, I was trying to get ready for this cruise. And I was just I was just in the gym by myself at first. And then this dude I worked with, Fred, he was like, you might as well come work out with me. I'll get you right for real. So I was like, you know what? Skip it. Let's go. So I started working out with him. I ain't gonna lie, bro. The first two to three weeks, he was trying to kill me, bro. Like this, this dude, he, he built, he ready, he he ready for the war, boy. I'm telling you, he ready. So he was, he was trying to kill me the first three weeks. But once I get, when I, once I got started with it, oh yeah, it was, it was time, it was time. 